We're kicking off our CES gaming highlight reel with something a little different, PlayStation VR 2. Big console gaming news at CES? The last time this happened, Microsoft launched the original Xbox at Las Vegas 21 years ago. Of course, in a year where many media outlets and companies decided to skip on attending CES in person, this was the year that Sony decided was the perfect time to offer up more details on its next-gen VR headset. It will be compatible with PlayStation 5 and the VR2 Sense controllers we've already seen. It'll have a display resolution of 2000 by 2040 pixels per eye, a 110 degree field of view, and be capable of 90 to 120 hertz frame rates, all while supporting 4K HDR. Consumer VR has evolved at light speed since the original PlayStation VR appeared, so Sony is playing catch up with some specs and features. These include inside out tracking, which uses multiple embedded cameras to track the movements of your head and the controllers. There will also be headset feedback, which sounds like the headset will shake and vibrate like a DualShock or DualSense controller. Haptic feedback actually turned out to be a minor trend at this year's show. Nvidia was also at CES looking to tease PC gamers. It revealed details of its new flagship GPU, the RTX 3090 Ti, with the promise of more information to come. This will be the company's ultra high-end desktop GPU, supplanting the RTX 3090. Like its predecessor, the 3090 Ti will have 24 gigs of GDDR6X memory, but run at 21 gigabits per second, as opposed to the 19.5 gigabits per second of the 3090. Nvidia added that the GPU is capable of calculating 40 shader teraflops, 78 ray tracing teraflops and 320 tensor, that is AI, teraflops. Broadly put, these numbers mean this will be the most powerful gaming card ever when it does get here. Nvidia says more details will be coming later this month, and we'll probably find out how outrageously priced the 3090 Ti will be. The current 3090 has an RRP of $1,500. Razer's popular Blade gaming laptop series were treated to upgrades everywhere. There's no redesign, maybe because they still look pretty slick, but across the 14, 15 and 17 models there are refreshed keyboards with slightly larger keys and a new thinner hinge design to help ventilation. That's all nice, but it's all about the upgrades that are coming to the spec sheet. All three will pack DDR5 RAM for the first time, and you'll be able to get them configured with the RTX 3080 Ti, Nvidia's once top flagship GPU. If you want a Blade 15 or 17, you'll also get Intel's new 12th gen processors. The new Blade 15 comes with the option of a UHD display with 144Hz refresh rates, up from 60Hz on the predecessor. Meanwhile, the Blade 17 will pack a bigger battery and 8 speakers, double the number built into the last Blade 17. All three models are coming out later this quarter. Beyond the gaming laptops and the contentious smart masks, Razer was ready to show its Pro model gaming chair. The Enki Pro Hypersense looks pretty similar to last year's $400 Enki chair, but this time comes with haptic vibrations courtesy of a collaboration with D-Box. Razer says it will support roughly 2,200 games, movies and TV series, mentioning publishers like Ubisoft and Microsoft. It's a Razer product, so yes, don't panic, there's still RGB lighting. The company didn't stop there either, as well as upgrading its chair, technically shown off as a concept. The company also had a new conceptual gaming desk for the internet to point fingers at and ridicule while secretly coveting the idea. The Project Sophia table has space for 13 separate modules, which could include capture cards, audio mixers, or dedicated touchscreen hotkey panels. Razer says hypothetical users would be able to reconfigure the table in seconds. The computer itself magnetically attaches underneath the glass tabletop surface, while a 65-inch OLED screen towers over it. Amazing, but you can't adjust the desk height for more comfortable gaming or working from home. Maybe. That all sounds pretty ridiculous. What sounds even sillier, though, is that the company said it could offer a 77-inch OLED model. Talking of imposing screens, I'll wrap things up with Samsung's wraparound 55-inch Odyssey Arc monitor. The latest, biggest version of the company's curved monitor series has an extra trick, one possibly aimed at the non-gaming crowds. The Odyssey Arc can actually rotate 90 degrees, looking almost like a three-screen setup, one stacked atop the other. The Arc features a quantum dot mini-LED display with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It also arches at the hinge, which is height adjustable, ensuring you can see every inch of this 55 inch beast. While it was on show at CES, Samsung hasn't yet offered a technical spec sheet, let alone pricing or availability. If you're intrigued, it might be worth planning for a bigger desk. 
and those were the biggest gaming stories from CES 2022. But if you're looking for even more laptops, the newest phones, or the hottest new EVs from this year's show, find them all over at engadgets.com. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe, even if you don't want some office furniture with RGB lighting.